<laughs> oh no. Oh no. Your brother, your brother Erskine, is now a prophet. I have a prophet status now. For the first time ever, I predicted the Super Bowl winner correctly. And for those of you who are Kansas City Chief fans who were probably upset with me after I picked the Kansas City Chiefs the other day, thinking he never gets these things right. I guess a broken clock can be right two times a day at least. I have finally picked the Super Bowl winner. Kansas City Chiefs have won, or did they win? Isn't it, isn't it weird that we live in the type of world today in which it doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't matter what it is. Whether it be an election. Whether it be a sporting event. Anything. There's going to be somebody with a conspiracy theory that comes back and says it didn't really happen. Kansas City didn't really win. Replay the game. That last play of the game was super fishy. And so we could say that about this as well. But, 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 but. I just want to let you guys know. I have predicted the Super Bowl winner, so I am like Moses. I don't know what's going on in this. I'm watching this. Hey, folks, it's time for us to go. Hey, it's time for you guys to follow me. We are going to the promised land. Look at homeboy. I love this little Charlton Heston action going on here. All right, get that chunk off the screen. It's the Erskine Music Show, and the reason why you guys tune into this show is because you guys know. Stop sharing. You guys know that I'm going to bring news commentary reports spirituality jesus jesus and then at the end of the day i'll be talking to you guys about jesus and so i'm gonna be getting into the story today of travis kelsey pushing his coach i saw it didn't look good at the time i heard the explanation didn't sound good at the time um this is a pre-recorded show and so hopefully you guys are going to drop a lot of comments in the comment section but i want to talk a little bit about this situation because i know there's very spanish points on things i don't always get it right but I can't remember when I've ever gotten it wrong. So anyway, it's the Erskine Music Show. Let's get to it today. we got a lot on the pitch deck today, and I need to apologize when I come back on the other side of the break for what happened yesterday. So we'll do that in just a moment. All right, so any tag information that you guys need is down there at the bottom of the screen. If you want to check out Erskine Music, you can, you should, you will be blessed by it. I think so. Big Head is here on the set trying to let me know if there's anything that I'm doing wrong. He going to let me know. He going to tell me, hey, thanks, Big Head. All right. Party Big Head is in the house. What is he doing? He's starting to party, party. Yeah, I think we get some of that on the show. We're going to be talking about the Super Bowl. So there's some Kansas City folks that are out there. And uh, they'll be excited. They'll be excited. Very much so. Very much so. All right. And uh, always the voice of consciousness here. The three stooges here today. This third stooge here is really concerned that I sometimes will get a little unhinged on this show and say something I'm not supposed to say. Well, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. I got this. I got this today. So we're coming at this thing again today. Let me get the tags out of the way real quick. It's gonna be a quick show today. I gotta get on the road. I gotta I gotta drive today. So you're gonna get what you get. You get what you get and you don't throw a fit. We're gonna get to a devotion today. And then we're gonna get to the Travis Kelsey sound bites, commentary, discussion. I would love to know what you guys think. Some of you guys didn't see it. Some of you guys don't really care about that. Some of you guys don't watch sports. Shame on you. Uh some of you guys don't like sports, even more shame on you. Uh, and some of you guys don't watch the Super Bowl or do anything about that or know anything about that or say anything about that or see anything about that. Hear no evil, see no evil. And that's just the way you live. If that's your peace in life, to not be engaged in these worldly affairs, then you're probably not even watching the Erskine Music Show. So to that, if, if that's how you got to get through life, uh, go ahead and do your thing. But for those of you who are watching the Erskine Music Show, I want you guys to know that when I'm using source material on this show, when I'm using source material that is not my own, I'm not stealing. It's not plagiarism. In fact, it's called fair use for the purpose of criticism. Comment news. All right. For those of you who are watching on various platforms, I love it. Let's do this the reverse way. Let's do this the reverse way. Let's see if we can do this. We're going to talk about this. Uh, uh, Rumble, LinkedIn, Twitch, X, Facebook, and YouTube. Rumble! <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
oh i'm in the other bank with my sound sounds do you guys remember this sound i know those of you who have watched the show for a while you hadn't heard that sound in season eight have you yeah <laughs> so, uh, oh. i think uh i was playing that sound a lot in season five and my viewership went down from like 800 subscribers to about 600 subscribers and so from all i from all accounts i think you guys love that sound all right if you've not subscribed to the show already you know what you know what you need to do you need to click the bell notifications you need to subscribe you need to i'm telling you like i'm your daddy you need to read the book of revelation you need to figure out who this 144,000 are because i think those are the subscribers for my show once we get to 144,000 we're cutting them off mm, boom All right. I got nothing more to say. Nothing more to say. You drop your comments in the comment section. If you're watching this in the morning, if you're watching this in the evening, if you're watching this afternoon, if you're watching this in the nighttime, deep in the heart of night, then uh, you guys can uh, participate as you see and feel led. Again, I'm not here live, live, live with you. But I always jump in that comment section after you guys get done. And you guys have been chopping it up in the comment section. I love it. So stay classy, folks that are out there. And uh, let's get to some prayer here. We're going to get to a devotion today. I'm starting to like this guy named Vince Miller. I don't know who he is, but he'd be talking to men. And looking men in the face and saying, man, if you want to be a real man, you need to listen up. And I like it. I like that kind of smoke. I like it when people have honest talk with people. Because that's something you don't find a lot these days. I'm going to be in Romans, but I'm going to say a quick word of prayer. You know, we don't do this show just on our own strength. It would be unfair if I just tried to do this show with my own intellect and ability. But it's really going to be unfair when I ask the Lord to help out with this. And so uh, I'll ask the Lord to do whatever he needs to do to humble me so that there's humility laid in the show. And sometimes I don't do everything that I could do on the show. The Lord just helps me to do everything I should do on this show. So anyway, let's go for it. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your word. We thank you, Lord, that it is the truth. It is the plumb line by which we come to it. And we recognize that all other things, all other egos, all other advancements are nothing. Foolishness, as the scriptures would describe them. And so help me, help us today not to be foolish, to depend on our own strength. And to devise some kind of plan by, whereby we can uh, do our thing irrespective of the Holy Spirit. So, God, we pray. Strengthen. Uh, we just look to you, the author and finisher of our faith. Take us supremely and squarely home, safely to the other shore. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, grab your Bibles. We're going to be in Romans. Romans chapter 12. This will be a familiar passage of scripture for some of you today. Today is a day that the Lord has made. Romans chapter 12. I'm, I'm actually old school in it, just like everybody else out there. Old school in it. Man, it's cold in this thing. All right, let's turn that off there. Had a little heater going on down there. Okay, so we got heaters going off around here. We got dogs running around here. And uh, I, I left the door open. So if the camera falls down, it is probably because the dog ran in here and is trying to trying to get uh, some publicity. The dog can get no publicity today. Romans chapter 12. This is a Bible. I remember that moment on, uh, what was it, Hoosiers? This is a basketball. This, my friends, is a Bible. Romans chapter 12, therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Now listen to these words. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his perfect, good, pleasing, excuse me. His will is his good, pleasing and perfect will. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers, the hears, 
，那都我造废土。All right, let's get to this. This is Vince Miller, and he's talking about what makes a man. And that subject matter, whenever I see something like that, is always going to interest me. And I think it should interest you too. Even if you're a woman who is watching this today, what is the plumb line and what is the standard for men in our culture? Men who are leaders in our culture, men who are the head of the house. And yes, if you're a woman that's watching this today, Sit your butt down. If you're a woman that's watching this today and you're married to a man, that man should be the spiritual leader of your house. You might know more than he does. You might be able to articulate and communicate better than your husband, but your husband is the spiritual leader of your house. Do you have kids? Do you have certain responsibilities that are commensurate with the family? prophet, priest, protector, all those sort of things, that should be the man. When the man does what he's supposed to be doing, the wife and the children and the community begin to flourish. And so I want to make sure that we're absolutely clear about that today when we get to this devotion. People need to stop calling me, but I do understand. They're calling me because this is not a traditional time when I'm normally recording. I'm pre-recording this, and so game on. We may get interrupted here, but let's, let's, go, let's go for it today. I mean, ain't playing around today. Let's go for it. Know when you've been courageous enough. How do you know when you've been holy enough? How do you know when you've been bold enough? Well, you don't know. You know how I know that? Because all four of these pathways that we pursue to manhood are built on corrupt belief systems. Do you know why? Okay. They come from the world. That's why. They come from this world. It's us trying to figure out our way to becoming men in this world. That's what Paul is talking about here. That basically God is going to give us over to the systems of the world if you're going to choose to chase the systems of the world to understand what it means to be a man. I'm going to tell you this right now. It's very basic logic. If you want to understand how to become a man, all you have to do is go back to the creator of men to understand that creation. Come on. Hang on one second. We need to say something about that real quick. We need to say something about having God be the one who decides and defines what the terms are in the great discussion of life that we're having. I'm going to put my feet up here for just a second. Just a second. Let me, let me ball out on this one for just a second. I've got a song called The Giver of Life. I should have put it in the pitch deck today to play. We got another song queued up for today. But in that song, I talk about a very pro-life, pro-entirety of life from the womb to the tomb. But, but we don't get into any of those topics. A very classy, very jazzy, very good sounding song that it, it says that God is the giver of life. God is the giver of life. Then he's the one who gets to make the decisions about life. If God is the one who created men then why would we consult other men to figure out what we're supposed to be doing? And a lot of life feels that way, right? We're looking around at other people and we're trying to triangulate, well, they live in that kind of house. So maybe I should, they drive that kind of, so maybe I should, well, they act like this. Well, maybe I should, well, all their kids do. Well, maybe I should. And we're triangulating and trying to figure out what, what to do in life based on what other people are doing, which is a stinky, rotten starting place, ending place being place in life why don't we just ask god and i know that even in that there's going to be some variances in the way that we go about doing things commensurate with our natural talents and abilities not everybody can get on here and do a live stream show like this and i'm not even bragging this is not me being prideful not everybody can sit in front of a camera talk to the camera talk to the people that are out there field questions do the technology, do all those different things. And I'm not saying that like this is a glamorous life. I have a thousand subscribers. It's not like, look, I am God's gift to uh, podcasting and live streaming. But what I am simply saying about all that is that commensurate with the gifts that God has given us, we will all play this out in various ways, but we should play it out from the standpoint of believing and understanding who God is and who God has made men to be. And within the confines of that, 
then we begin working out the details of what's going on there. So I love the fact that he stopped us for just a second to say something that was really good. You don't go back to other men and what they're saying. You don't go, go back to media, social media, your teacher even. You don't go back to a counselor. You don't go back to your wife. She's wrong too, by the way, sometimes. You don't go back to your kids or anything else that's happening on the news to understand what makes a man. You go back, back to God. To okay. Yes, 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 yes. And yet there's the other side of that, right? Because I can hear somebody tuning in. The dolphins are swimming. They're swimming up. And they're saying, well, God providentially places other people in your life to be a checks and balances. That was not even the right sentence. To be a check and balance to things that go on in your life. And so consulting with your wife, kind of like I do on Sunday, um, before we do our Tuesday sermon review and service review, um, I'll ask my wife on Sunday night, so how did everything go today? <laughs> if you're married, you should ask your, especially if you're in ministry and uh, you're ministering, maybe you should ask your wife how things really went according to her view. Sometimes it's very interesting to see the perspectives that are, are given in my home. I, I think things are going quite well. Uh, only 10 people left. <laughs> only 10 people left angry. So I thought it was a good day. No, 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 none of that stuff. None of that stuff. But just, you know, I can hear people saying the pushback on that, or might be even the pushback, but the, the, com the complete rounder to that would be, look, God places some very wise people in your life and it should be good for you to listen to them. And there's, I know that there's some other men. I had one of them on the show, Marshall Holbrook, Holbrook was on the show not too long ago. And we were talking about discipleship. We were talking about what that looks like, but we get a chance to live that out. We've had several opportunities to interact with one another and watching the way that he lives his life and challenging me on some things, going through a season in life in which there's some men who have gone specifically through some of the things that we're walking through in these teenage years who've been able to speak into my life. And so don't hear me put this devotional up there so that I can say, look, this guy and the way that he says everything and the way that he thinks about everything is the only way. And I'm enfranchising has franchising his voice and elevating his voice and his voice has become my voice. No, I can listen to these things and I can think through these. Do you do you? No, 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 no. You, you move over. Do you? Yes, you. I see that hand. Do you have something that you would add to the conversation? Now, nah, it's got to be good. It's got to be good. Don't be coming in there and doing little hearts and little emojis and little different things like that. Kind of like Melissa Daughtry's thing. Uh, can we just get an emoji Bible? No. Don't be doing all that. But do you have something that you want to add to the conversation? Bring that smoke. Just a few, a few minutes more on this. Understand you how a man is made. And that's what God is talking about here. We got to stop going to the world to get answers about what makes a man. God makes men. Period. That's it. And that may be controversial, but it's the truth. I love, I just want to freeze frame it on those eyes and that look. He's determined. He's staring somebody down with like Superman laser eyes at that point. This is good. I really do like this. I really do like the controversy of our age. I think I appreciate it. I appreciate the controversy of our age because to say what makes a man, you guys know just about every show I'm on this thing with regards to the trans movement in our society, the trans movement who has wrongly positioned the idea that we can self referentially go and define ourselves as a specific gender. You guys know what's at stake in that conversation. Lunacy, foolishness, debauchery, debilitating things that are being done to the human body, mental illness, and a host and a variety of other 
social, spiritual, mental, physical concerns related to that subject. And so I don't even see where there needs to be any controversy. God has clearly spoken. It would be wrong for me. It would be wrong for me to come back and begin to speak to you in such a way that I am uncertain about what God says. Sometimes when there's something that's wrong in scripture, we look at it and we say, well, it would be wrong for me to say this when scripture says that it would be a contradiction. I would be false. I would be hypocritical. But it would be wrong for me also to him who knows the good that he ought to do and does not do it to him in his sin. The good that I ought to do, it would be wrong for me to not say that on various shows, knowing that this world is holy and profoundly confused on the issue of what a man is and what a woman is. That was just borderline embarrassing to watch Katanji Brown in her Supreme Court hearing be asked the question of what is a woman and fumble on that question. And for many of the progressive folks that are out there, when they're asked the question, what is a woman? They fumble around with the answer. What is a man? I don't know what's going on here in this world. And so it would be wrong for me to not say that. I feel like at this point in where we live it in society, um, if you think, well, you know, you don't want to poke the bear, you don't want to upset people, people, this is not your show. Because it would be wrong for me, for me. I'm talking about between me and God and this devotional that I use every day and this time in the word here and sitting at this desk long before this show starts. It would be wrong for me to not say that God clearly has defined the bounds by which biologically uh, a man is a man and then spiritually the resultant responsibilities of that man in society, of that man in relationship to worshiping God. I don't care how tough you think you are. I don't care how bad a man you think you are. Every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. It tells us that in Philippians. And so since that is the case, I don't care what you put around yourself. I don't care how you build yourself up. I don't care what hormones you boost. I don't care what you are doing. You will bow your knee. My prayer is that you would bow your knee with a degree of humility, with a degree of awe, with a degree of reverence for who God is, instead of having to bow your knee because you didn't crane your neck, he didn't take it in your neck, he didn't cram it because you're facing squarely the wrath of Almighty God. Yeah, that's a pretty good devotion today. Let's get it. <laughs> <laughs> all right let's get some erskine music for today we got our friend sarah who's coming in to talk to us about the erskine show also known as the erskine music show hey i'm sarah weir and you are watching the erskine show oh my goodness she got sparkles and things going on in there she's doing all the things all right this song is called everything after everything, I'm coming back and we're talking about this Travis Kelsey stuff. And so if you're hanging with the Erskine Music Show, uh, this show is just a show where we're going to talk about everything, anything. But I can't get to everything. I never run out of topics on this show because you guys never run out of stuff that you do in the course of a day that makes it on the Internet. That makes it something that we can talk about. Because if, even if it's just a small slice of life, I want you guys to see life happen in real time and how we respond to that. But before we do that, here's my song, Everything and if you like the song, you can always get music streamed on any of the platforms that you guys enjoy. Enjoy. I was a wanted, I was a castaway, running from it. How did I last the day when you found me running? To a great light I was blind when I found my sight Oh, I tried changing the way I was thinking But I couldn't do it alone The gospel gave me a reason For living a new life in Jesus alone Now it's changing, oh it's changing It's changing everything Feel 
Feels like I'm running free. Life is so different than what it used to be. Tested by rescue. I'm never going back. Not to find by a broken past. Oh, oh, I tried changing the way. So let's get to our top story for today. This is Travis Kelsey. He pushes his coach. And there's some a prism of issues that I think come out of that. You don't mean to be critical of Travis Kelsey. I know some people are they'll get a little concerned about that when they see a Christian that comments on something that happens in the world. We just need to give grace. We just need to give forgiveness. We just need to give the love of Christ. I get all of that, but that this is not that show. That show or what you're talking about, grace, forgiveness, relationship, all those things, that happens in the real world. Once I go on the other side of this camera, I'm living that out every day. This show is for the commentary purposes of it and hopefully for the education purposes of it and as an instructive way of hopefully illuminating certain issues that are out there so that we can have what I'd like to call courageous conversations. And so let's get to this today. It's our top story. Travis Kelsey pushes his coach and the fallout from the Super Bowl. On today's show. All right. All right. So this is <clears throat> page six here, the New York Post. And it's just going to show uh, just a little bit of this video, viral video now of Travis Kelsey pushing his coach. And I'm sure in the sports world, there's going to be a lot of people who are talking about that. There's a lot of different prisms, right? In the discussion, we could be talking about the game. We could be talking about the last play, talking about overtime, talking about the, the block kick, talking about Patrick Mahomes, talking about Brock Purdy, talking about how they handled certain situations, talk about turnovers, talk about coaching. You can talk about a variety of different things. And if that's the angle, if there's a specific thing that you're looking for, go find somebody that's talking about that. Colin Cowherd has got a good show. Stephen A. Smith has got a good show. Max Kellerman. I like Max Kellerman. I think he's one of the best. Uh, they've all got good shows that are out there. And they're talking about all the different angles. Chris Broussard, Nick Wright. You can go check out some of those things. Jason Whitlock from time to time. He has some really good analysis of things. So go check those things out. But I specifically want to talk about this incident of pushing. And so if you don't know at all what it is that I'm talking about, then let's watch the screen here. Just watch the screen. Comes over to Andy. He goes, keep me in. What happened is... On the fumble, he was not in the game. Noah Gray went in. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
we're gonna go through some of these comments here in just a second because I, I, I think we want to tease out some of these things. Fumble. All right, so here's the deal. Comes over to Andy. He goes, "Keep me in." What pushes happened is, the coach almost knocks him over. Fumble, he was not yelling at his coach, and it's kind of like he was he was shocked by that. The play in question was not one in which, you know, like Sandlot football, he's open, he's open. Give me the dang ball, Keyshawn Johnson. Give me the dang ball. That wasn't at all what was going on there. He wasn't even in the game. Somebody else was in the game, and there was a turnover that happened in which I guess he thought I was open before. A couple of things. Maybe he thought I was open before and you should have thrown it to me and I, you know, would have been able to get down the field or whatever. The play before that, a couple of plays before that. Because you could see him uh, a couple of plays before that. He was open. He was actually open. But Patrick Mahomes threw it to somebody else that was farther down the field than him. And so it became a huge play in the game. And he was at first like, hey, why are you not throwing me? The and then he saw what happened down the field. He's like, okay I'm, okay, I'm good with that. Well, they took him out of the game the next play. And then they turned the ball over. And so he's coming up to Andy Reid and he's pushes him. And I don't, I don't know any other way to describe that. I played college basketball. If I ran up to the referee and angrily made contact with the referee to the point where the referee stumbled, I would be out of the game. This is, this is unacceptable. That is unacceptable in relationship to the coach. There is, in sports, an unwritten rule. You can go back and forth with one another. The emotions of the game and the, the things that are at stake, especially in the Super Bowl, those run high. Those run hot. You can go back and forth with one another if you're in that kind of environment. But the second physical contact is made with regards to the player and the coach, the player has overstepped his bounds. I, I, I don't know any other way to say that. And so to watch in this situation here, run, run, take back, run, take back, run, take back, run, take back. Comes over to Boom. Andy, he goes, keep Boom. me in. What happened is I'm he playing football on the coach. Fumble, he was not in the game. Noah Gray went in. And his um, teammate, Jerick McKinnon comes over and grabs him and says, whoa, hang on a second. Hang the heck on. The Kansas City Chiefs this last year, even though they won the championship, even though they're, they're talking like, hey, we're coming back next year. I don't think so. And it's not because of Patrick Mahomes. I think that Travis Kelsey has become a cancer in that locker room. If he doesn't get the ball, he's a pouty, whiny, spoiled entitled, belligerent, abusive. <laughs> this is words. <laughs> Player on that team. Let's read some of the headlines. The team fumbled. Okay, he's irate with coach. The coach didn't fumble the ball. The player that fumbled the ball. Now, here's another angle. And I don't I haven't listened to any of the shows. I'm recording this before any of the shows have come out. This is not my normal recording time. I've got to pre-record because I'm gonna be on the road for the next couple of days. But you guys need your content and uh I want to give it to you. I've not heard anybody talk about this, but I'm sure at some point somebody's gonna talk about this. If you were upset that a play happened that worked against your team, i.e. Uh, a player fumbled the ball. I think it may have been Isaiah Pacheco or somebody like that. One of the running backs fumbled the ball. Uh, maybe it was uh, Edwards Hilaire who fumbled the ball. I don't know who fumbled the ball, but they fumbled the ball. You're upset about that play. Why don't you go up to that player and give him some smoke with regards to what has happened? Now, that, that goes against unwritten rules also in sports. Because you're on the same team. And so to be fighting against each other on the same team is counterproductive. You do re recognize this. And so I'm not advocating that he should do this and be uh, a distraction to his team or to be combative with his teammates. But why are you going to go up to the coach? 
See, that kind of makes you look like a little bit of a buster. That makes you look like a little bit of a punk. Here you are all padded up, all big, all swole. All Give me your comments. I know what you're thinking. All big, all swole. And you're going to go up to the coach who has no pads on. He's not even expecting you to come up to him because people don't even do that sort of thing. And you're going to come up and you're going to bump him and you're going to be yelling in his face. Now, the yelling in his face, that's just sports, folks. If you don't like people who are yelling, if you don't like men who are aggressive, if you don't like men who actually exert some kind of testosterone, this is not going to be your show, <laughs> first of all. But second of all, that kind of thing gets called toxic masculinity in our culture, and I just cannot stand it. I cannot stand it. Finger in the wind. Nope. 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 I'm not going to let the winds of change change what it is that I think about that. There's a place for sports. There's a place for people to be irate. There's a place for people to yell. There's a place for people to take out their aggression within the confines of the game. And it is good. G-O-O-D. Can I get it? Uh, country of origin? Did I spell it correctly? All right, good. No, I spelled it correctly. It is good to have those spaces in society where those kind of things happen. But even within that, can we make some commentary that says something to the effect of there's got to be within those bounds some kind of understanding, either written or unwritten, about the relationship between the player and the coach? I know the emotions were high. He wants to be in the game. He wants to be successful. He knows he's a great player. I mean, I think you can see that this would happen. So I made this comment at the time. And we're gonna we gonna go. We're gonna get off of this one. I made the comment at the time. The way the Kansas City Chiefs run their offense. It's a lot of misdirection. It's a lot of reading what's going on. Got motion that's going on there. So you can kind of determine whether they're in the zone or they're playing man to man. They're getting the matchups that they want. The play that they were running was probably a play that they were going to use to set up the next play that Travis Kelsey was going to be in. This is what they've done all season. Travis Kelsey was probably, I'm not, I don't know exactly because I'm not on their staff, but he was most likely going to be set up to be successful another play that's after that the next play after the fumble and so at a certain point what has gotten you to the place where you're at is your coaches and the ability for them to coach you to be successful and the the group of teammates who are there with you to be successful in the scenarios and situations at least enough situations so that you are in the super bowl so it's not like these were dog butt coaches who had no idea what they were doing out there who had no sense of game flow management time personnel they just are out there just doing stuff no that is not what is going on here lest you think that any of that is happening there's a very meticulous reason why he was not in the game and why he was likely going to be in the game and the fact that his player teammate fumbled the ball is a result of the fact that the actual san francisco 49ers were playing defense good defense and trying to get the ball in your face sucker so let's get a little bit more commentary on this. And I can't stay long today, but I want to come with it, Travis Kelsey's brother. And uh, I think this there's some interesting things that come out of this. And I wanted to talk about a couple of those things with you guys today. I want you to jump in the comment section and I want you guys to reply to the things that are discussed here. And I'm wondering, I'm wondering if any of you guys have some of the same thoughts in mind. Kelsey has reacted to the controversy regarding Travis during the Super Bowl. Travis Kelsey suffered a touchline meltdown during the Super Bowl after cameras caught him shoving his coach, Andy Reid, and screaming directly in his face. We saw his that. girlfriend, Taylor Swift, was watching on from the $1 million family suite in Las Vegas when Travis appeared furious that he did not receive the ball on a... That was basically nonsense commentary. Um... The million dollar suite that Taylor was in. There's so much. There's so there was so much. 
rumored to have been going on the potential things going on in relationship with Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey and the promotions and a possible uh, engagement and possible retirement and 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 all of these things that are going on with relationship to that there's so much of that such a popular story so galvanizing i'd mentioned something uh there was a group of we were watching the game with a group of teenagers they were all in the other room and i said something about travis kelsey and taylor swift and they all just ran into the room oh he's gonna propose to her oh, all the different things that are out there i think one of the interesting angles and the reason why i'm bringing this up is travis kelsey look i'm gonna look at the screen and say you're welcome to come on this show travis kelsey but don't be coming and trying that rock jock stuff over here. You're a thug and you're a jerk. You're a good player, but father time will catch you as well. And so maybe some humility about your talents, maybe some humility about, uh, I don't know, the way that you treat your teammates when you don't get the ball, maybe an actual example for kids who are watching you, who want to be great someday to see the kind of character that you have. Just a little challenge there. Just a little challenge, a little thought there, a little thought there that, you know, there might be some people who play the game after you. There might be some young ones who are watching you to whom you have some responsibility to demonstrate a certain character. You can't give away what you don't have, but you always give away what you do have. And so, Travis Kelsey, you're welcome to come on this show. You're welcome to come on this show and talk to me about what's going on up here and in here. In relationship to the things that are going on there i say all of this to just simply say i don't it's a little it's the edge it's the edge for me you want to figure out where the edge is for me here's the edge here's the line that i go ah, i'm stepping up to this line but i'm not quite sure i want to take a step past this line even for me i don't mind calling anything anybody out anywhere anytime so far as i feel like that's going to be helpful for the body of Christ and for people to see, let's talk about these issues. Let's have some courageous conversation. Let's see that vantage point kind of teased out. But here's one that I go, oh, I'm not quite sure. I want to step all the way across this line. I'll step up to it, but I'm not going to step across this line. And it is, it is with all the things that are going on and all the teenagers around the room, all, the relationship that you have with Taylor Swift. It has fascinated people. It is mind-boggling to people. It is galvanized whole fan bases and groups of people to know the inner workings of what this is like and how things are going to play out. And because of that, and I'm just telling you this, the commentator is going to make some comments about if you will treat your coach that way in the heat of battle, how will you treat your girlfriend? And let's just suppose this is not just a match made for convenience. How will you treat your wife? If you're a angry man who is prone to anger, that's a good question. I think that's a, that's a legitimate question. I'm not saying Travis Kelsey, that you are a wife beater or that you are have potentially uh, the DNA to be a wife beater. But I think we should at least ask the question based on what we saw. Play Heading back to the bench, Kelsey got in the face of his 65-year-old coach, and it is not the first time it has happened. Approaching from the side, cameras caught Kelsey storming towards the coach and bumping into him, causing him to temporarily lose his footing. Kelsey then grabs his coach's arm as he turns to face him, before again screaming in his face, before being pulled away by a teammate. On Christmas Day, Kelsey suffered a similar incident with uh -oh. his coach and was spotted slamming his helmet to the floor during a 20-14 loss to the Las Vegas Raiders. After all of this happened, Jason Kelsey shared his reaction to what happened. During the match, Jason left a comment online underneath the infamous video. In Jason's mm. comment, he said, People make mistakes and nobody understands what it's like in the heat of the moment. Focus on the game and stop the drama. Well, I think when you make a comment like that, you're pretty much acknowledging uh that was a mistake <laughs> at least his brother came out and said that was a mistake there's a lot of emotions that are going on you know i'm sure the commentary of the same kind of fiery personality that makes him a great player is a double-edged sword look 
you live by the emotion you die by the emotion you live by the passion you die by the passion i live by the word you can die by the word i get it our greatest strength can sometimes become our greatest weakness but my wife and i were having this conversation and she asked the question she said, I, I don't like that Travis Kelsey guy. I saw him go and push his coach. And I was like, yeah, you know, passion, game. So what, what, how'd that reflect on him? He's like, well, the response to that was, this is just a really intense moment. It's the Super Bowl. Everybody's trying to win. Legacy, all these things are at stake. There's pressure that's there. My wife's comment was, there's more pressure in life than there is in the Super Bowl. Now, I've never played in the Super Bowl. She's never played in the Super Bowl. And so that may be referentially incoherent to those who have played in the Super Bowl. But what I am simply saying <laughs> is that life is going to heat up in some moments. Sometimes in moments that you least expect. At least... He knew he was going to play the Super Bowl. It's not his first time being in the Super Bowl. He knew how to prepare for the Super Bowl. And yes, there's emotions when you're playing in the Super Bowl, I'm sure. But yet he knew the game was coming. He knew what was at stake. And he knew that they were going to be pressed perhaps in some adverse situations because San Francisco 49ers are a good team. So, 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 what happens in life when life begins to heat up? It won't be the coach. He won't be married to the coach. That's some homosexual stuff that you guys know. I'm not advocating any of that kind of stuff. He'll be married to a woman, most likely. I don't see Travis Kelsey going down the route of the woke agenda in America or gender confusion or any of those things. He'll be married to a woman and something will happen that is equal or greater in proportion to the pressure that he felt when he was in the Super Bowl. And with some of the NFL players, Ray Rice, a litany of other NFL players who have charges against them for domestic abuse, does it then follow that Travis Kelsey, from this little window of what it is that we've seen, a couple of incidences that have happened throughout the year, do we say, oh my God, and I don't say that as a swear word. Oh my God, what will he be like? What would he be like if he was married to a woman? Taylor Swift or anybody else. When things don't go his way. When she makes an argument or says something that he doesn't like. When he's quote unquote not in the game at a critical time in life. And he's called upon to respond with humility with patience, with gentleness, what would he be like in that situation? Would he go and bump his wife? Would he go and start screaming in her face with some outlandish form of verbal abuse? What would he be like? I think it's a fair question to ask. I'm not going to go and I'm going to psychoanalyze this man and I'm going to tell you that he's going to be a wife beater. I can tell by the way that he interacts with people and is nonverbal. There's people who do that sort of thing. I'm not that person. And if you want if you want that kind of analysis, there's people who read body language all the time and they can tell you this is what this person really thinks. I just kind of go by what it is that I see. And uh, if I had a chance to ask him, maybe have a men's devotion with him, uh, I might ask him about some of these things. In fact, Travis Kelsey, if you want to come on uh, the show, we can talk about some of these things because I, I do want to ask you the question. I do want to look you in the face. I want to look the camera in the face and I'm going to say, um, Travis, brother Travis, I don't know if he's a brother or not. I don't know if he's a brother in Christ. Do you find that the outbursts of anger, there's a pre precipitous climb in the outburst of anger. This is an outburst of anger. Let me make a mistake about this. Do you see that climbing in your life or do you see that subsiding? Like, give me not um, the perfection. This never happens, but give me the direction that you're trending in life. Because it has been noted this year that those kind of incidences, at least in public eye, have been going up, perhaps even in private. 
And so if we're going in a particular direction, escalating in a way that is unbiblical, ungodly, perhaps, just perhaps, there's something that is missing that is fundamental in the transformational process. I would love to have that conversation with Travis Kelsey. Can you get him? Can any of you guys get Travis Kelsey to come to the show? I would love to have him. Despite Jason defending Travis, most fans are furious with Travis's behavior. One fan said, yeah, that wasn't cool. I'm a Chiefs fan, but you don't attack your coach like that. Watch out, Taylor. Signs of a wife beater right there with that temper. Another. And that's the reason why I got into that, because the comments are already being made. A fan said, I saw that replay. He really scared his coach out of nowhere. It's the Super Bowl. Emotions are high, but Jesus, take it easy. Andy needs to put Kelsey in his place. Total lack of respect for him. Put his butt in timeout even longer for that. And I'm not in the front office of the Chiefs. But here's an observation that I've made. Both in the AFC Championship trophy presentation and the Super Bowl trophy presentation. And I got to go here. I'm not going to make this very much longer. I love it. Um, I love it, but I'm not going to be able to stay very much longer. I saw the owner of the team handle the trophy presentation with such class and such humility and such honor for his parents, the Chiefs fan base, the other team. And I thought it was class personified. I wonder what they must think about Travis Kelsey and some of the things that they have been able to observe with regards to his persona. Sometimes organizations will shoot themselves in the foot because they'll keep a guy around way too long who becomes a distraction, who becomes a cancer in the locker room. I don't know this for certain, but Tyreek Hill, Travis Kelsey, both wanting and needing to feel like they are, need to get the ball. I don't think that was going to work in Kansas City. And you say, well, why would you get rid of a great, fantastic wide receiver that is on your team and then just let them go? It's because you can't handle all of those egos in one locker room. I'm wondering if for the Kansas City Chiefs and their organization, they found a way to win with what I consider to be C plus wide receivers, A plus tight end. But I'm wondering if they got B plus wide receivers and B plus B minus tight end, if they wouldn't just be a better team with a calmer locker room and one that is more given over to teamwork and camaraderie. I'm just wondering. I'm just wondering. Are you so much of a distraction that you need? to go this person was talking about putting travis kelsey on the bench putting him in timeout we don't have timeout that's for little kids but they put him on the bench benching him and letting some other players play but i'm thinking why don't you just cut him all together because this doesn't seem like it's a trend that's stopping it's only going to increase and as travis kelsey has talked about i'm coming back next year we're gonna get a, get a third one maybe the team gets a third one and maybe you get to go to the super bowl and buy a ticket. Maybe you can be sitting next to Taylor next year at the Super Bowl watching your former team win another Super Bowl without you. Because one of the things that you need to know, just like everybody that's out there, just like Michael Jordan, who's up on the screen in the back, you see MJ, the GOAT, the GOAT. Just like LeBron James, your time will come, your time will go. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, to everything there's a season. Your time will come, your time will go. And uh, should the Lord tarry, the organization will continue without you. You are not greater than the organization. You are a player in the organization. You help the organization. But Tom Brady, he's not in the league anymore. He's not winning any more championships. And so they will have the Kansas City Chiefs with or without Travis Kelsey. I would be interested to see what he has to say. I would really be interested if he would come on this show and talk so that I can get a greater sense as to whether or not I think Kansas City Chiefs need to just go ahead and cut him or if they can tolerate. You can tolerate one or two fools on a team where you have 50 or 60 people, but you can't tolerate a lot of those fools. And so maybe the culture that is being produced around him, like Jarek McKinnon coming up and grabbing his arm and saying, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. 
maybe that's the kind of culture in which you can contain someone of this stature and hot-headedness but maybe it's not all right and finally, one more fan said, pressure getting to him big time. It's all good when you're winning. True character shows itself when you're down. I hope he doesn't get angry like this to Taylor. For this video's comment question. All right. True character shows itself when you're losing. When the pressure is on. Man, I wish we had a whole nother... We're at 56 minutes. I got to cut the show off now. I don't have to cut the show off, but I want to cut the show off. I got to get on the road. But I wish we had more time to talk about how pressure will bust a pipe. Pressure that happens in life doesn't augment someone's character, but pressure that happens in life often reveals character. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Drop your comments in the comment section. It's the Erskine Music Show. Of course, we ball out like this every dang day. Tomorrow, before you leave, don't turn the thing off yet. Before you leave, I've got a special guest that's coming on. She's a gentle flower. She is a beautiful young lady. Princess-like. I'm not calling her a princess. Princess-like. And all of her charm and all of her godly character, it is Lydia Plath of Plathville. And I want you guys to be nice to her. I'm going to be nice to her, but I'm nice to everybody. I'm nice to all my guests, at least, at least most of the time. It's going to be an incredible interview. I don't know that I've interviewed someone like Lydia Plath before on my show. And so I just want you guys to know. I don't know exactly how this is going to go. <laughs> but I think it's going to be really, really, really good. So you want to come back tomorrow for the Erskine Music Shows, see Lydia Plath of Plathville and all the different things that she's doing. And if you're a young person talking to young people who know young people who do young people things, you want to see this show up here. Uh, an older person, you watch the show and you think, man, what's going on with this generation and uh, the youth of the nation? Um, be encouraged by what you're about to see tomorrow. It's the Yersky Music Show. See you guys soon. <laughs>